I love a quick reference guide and I love even more a quick reference guide about dialysis and it's here and here it is at my Etsy shop check it out I have over 30 items here already because dialysis is so much fun so let's just kind of look at it I added some things here that I haven't talked about in years and we're gonna start with them because nobody wants to wait the rule of seven for potassium baths have you guys ever heard of that because when I first started I'm like am I on the right bath do I need to call the provider to see if this bath needs to be changed their potassium's five what do I do they're on a 3k is this okay and they're at a six like it's my brain is just like oh my god I'm crazy rule basics the dialysate potassium so the potassium in the bath plus the patient's potassium should equal about seven. So if their potassium level is four, like, oh, if I drew their lab, it's four, they should be on a 3K bath. Four plus three equals seven. We don't always get even numbers like that, but that's okay. If a patient generally 4.5 and above, people are on a 2K bath. 4.5 plus two is 6.5, and we can round that to seven. Why it matters, common bath choices. 1K baths are used rarely for hyperkalemia or high potassium emergencies and every provider is different they might say run them for one hour on a 1k and then the rest of the treatment on a 2k or they'll be like no run them the whole treatment on a 1k it's just provider preference based on their own experiences i don't want to make it more complicated than it than it needs to be because this is quick reference to keep it simple i don't know what it's like wherever you are but where i am i can't just go change a bath because of this rule i need a physician order the other thing to remember i remember working with a provider if they were elderly if they were over 80 and they have a cardiac history they're just not a 3k they don't even think about a 2k bath they're on a 3k they feel it's gentler on the system and it's just safer for a patient with a lot of cardiac history and here a rule of seven is a guideline not an absolute this is going to give you some confidence and know like yeah this is the right time to call the, the provider and the physician might even be like yeah god thank you their potassium's 5.2 they're on a 3k bath their potassium's been running high the whole time do you think we should change it to a 2k bath i'm like yes yes Lindsay. absolutely good catch and up here we talked about k levels this is going to be so helpful for your new staff right now i can tell you critical potassium's like that like you know it's just so quick but I wasn't always like that it took a lot of practice to be like a 5.5 potassium is okay for a dialysis patient in the clinic is that true sometimes <laughs> sometimes <sighs> uh, well I should say 5.5 is the CMS guideline the CMS allows a dialysis patient to have a potassium 5.5 or less they say that that is within normal limits for dialysis patients so that's CMS but the provider will be like, I know what CMS says, but I want them to be five or under. Everybody's different. Everybody has different experiences and it's, it's not wrong. It's just different. High potassium foods to avoid. This will be helpful when I have a high potassium. So I guess I pretty much covered the right side. <laughs> the right side of this. Now let's go to the left side. AV fistula, AV graft. What do we know? Feel a thrill, listen to a brewery. What do we know about grafts? No tourniquet, no clamps. That is a gold standard. And here are some needle gauge guidelines. I can look at a blood flow. I'm like, okay, 350, that's gonna be a 16 gauge needle. Go get, grab me the green ones. 400, that's a blue gauge. But I didn't, again, I didn't always know that. I, I had no idea. I had to look at the blood flow and the needle gauge all the time. And then I'm like, which one is it? I like colors, obviously. So this is gonna be helpful for the new person. And then the other thing it took me forever to get is like, what is an okay arterial pressure? What is an okay venous pressure? Generally less than 250. This can be confusing because you think of this is a negative number, so it should be greater than 250, but it should be closer to zero. Both these numbers should be closer to zero and similar. I don't love an arterial or venous pressure of negative 250, but sometimes that's what I get. I get what I get. Measurement conversions, one kilograms equals 2.2 2 pounds, ounces, mils, kilograms, and liters. These ounces, it's the ounces that always get me when they're like 32 ounces, fluid restriction a day. Well, how much, how much is that? 32 ounces. So let's see, 13, 32 ounces equals 30 mils. I don't know at all. And I never will. 32 ounces, 32 times 30 mils. So that's 960 mil, so just under a liter. Okay, okay, see, now I can teach a patient because I've got a one liter bag hanging over here. How much can you drink a day? A little bit less than this, a little bit less than this. 
this big. This is what you can drink in a day. One liter equals one kilograms. Why do you guys always use kilograms? I don't know kilograms. Tell me pounds. This is why we always use kilograms because it equals one liter. Could you imagine if we, if I had, if I had a 32 ounce bag hanging and then a pound and then I'm trying to and then I'm trying to do the math of how much fluid I should remove based between ounces and pounds, I would, I would just, it would be hard. Phosphorus binder, this, I remember the dietitian being like, first bites of food, Lindsay. I'm like, what's the big deal? As long as they take it, they take it. And they're like, no, it does not work. Trust me, trust me, it does not work. If they don't take it with first bites of food. And I said, okay, I'll trust you. And that's how I started teaching patients. And if they know that right off the bat, the phosphorus binder is very specific. First bites of food, strict. Otherwise it doesn't work. Then it's just, you're just taking a pill and just flushing it down the toilet, literally. Iron, I have worked more with Perlicet over Venafor, but they are both slow infusions. That is what I need to remember, slow infusions. What you, we usually give like 125 milligrams of Perlicet. So 12.5 times, so that's 10 mils, 62.5 times, why, why am I having trouble here? 12.5 milligrams per mil. And if I have 12.5 times five mils, that's 62.5. So yeah, 10 mils, 10 mils of iron that I have to give. So that should take about 10 minutes. If I go too fast, they are gonna have GI upset and they're gonna be like, Lindsay, I'm not having that iron anymore. So I give it very slowly. I have three and a half hours, usually three hours to give this iron. And I will give it slow because they need their iron and I want them to have a good experience. I don't want them to be like, oh my God, iron. I'm gonna have an upset stomach for the rest of the day. Anaphylaxis, I have not experienced anaphylaxis ever since 2016. Doesn't mean I never will. So we wanna be ready because that's my anxiety. What do I do? Generally, my default is when something is happening, I don't rinse back the blood. That's my default. Like, no, don't, don't give back the blood. Except you always give back the blood during a code. They need their volume. Codes give back their blood. They need it. Hypotension, low volume, you give back their blood. Any kind of dialysate leak, hemolysis, you don't give back their blood. So anaphylaxis, we know what it looks like. It's all about breathing and airway in that anaphylaxis. Stop treatment, clamp lines, do not rinse back blood. Generally, you will have orders, whether it's part of your ACLS or part of your standing orders at the clinic to give epi for anaphylaxis. I did not know prune juice was high in potassium. I learned that while making this. I'm in the Midwest. We're, we're a meat and potato city over here in the Midwest, meat and potatoes, meat and potatoes with every meal. And I swear it's like lunchtime. If you have a potato at lunchtime, you're going to have a tomato base at dinner time or vice versa. It's wild, plus orange juice and banana for breakfast. Like there's a lot of potassium in a lot of our popular foods. Easier said than done. So I have a lot of compassion for people that have to follow this diet. And the thing is, a lot of people do. A lot of people do. They're just like, nope, can't have that, nope. It's amazing working with people on dialysis because they are resilient and strong and they show up. They show up and do what they gotta do. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.